Welcome to the next part of the module, which presents an overview of key Java synchronization and scheduling classes. The concurrent Java program examples presented in the previous part produced incorrect results since they lacked proper synchronization and scheduling. Therefore, this part summarizes the key Java classes provided by Android to synchronize access to critical sections and schedule interactions among threads in concurrent programs. We don't show any Java code in this part. We just outline its key synchronization and scheduling classes and compare and contrast them at a conceptual level. Subsequent parts of the module will show how to program these mechanisms in Java. Java defines many synchronization and scheduling classes in its Java Util Concurrent and Java Util Concurrent Locks packages, which are described at this link. We'll cover a subset of these classes including Rantrant Lock, which is a mutual exclusion mechanism that extends Java's built-in monitor lock capabilities, Rantrant Read-Write Lock, which improves performance when resources are read much more often than they're written to, Semaphore, which is conceptually a non-negative integer used to control the access of multiple threads to a limited number of shared resources, Condition Object, which allows threads to block themselves until some conditions involving shared state become true, and Countdown Latches, which allow one or more threads to wait until a set of operations being performed in other threads complete. Although these five classes allow Java threads to serialize and coordinate their interactions, they are distinct from the synchronize keyword and the wait, notify, and notify all methods provided by the built-in monitor object mechanisms available to all Java objects, which are described at this link. These five classes are more fundamental and flexible than the monitor lock and monitor condition provided by built-in monitor objects. So we present them first, which has the added benefit of making it easier to understand Java's built-in monitor objects when we cover them later. The performance and behavior of the Java synchronization and scheduling classes we'll cover in the remainder of this module depend on a number of factors, such as the implementation of the Java virtual machine, operating system, hardware, and use cases in which they're applied. There are various ways of implementing these classes. One alternative involves so-called spin locks, described at this link, that busy wait without sleeping until the lock is acquired. Spin locks often use low-level hardware test and set operations to implement mutual exclusion. These hardware operations are fast, but can incur the overhead of busy waiting, described at this link. An alternative is sleep locks, where the system puts a thread to sleep until it may be able to make progress again, which is often used for semaphores and condition objects, as described at this link. Although this approach doesn't incur busy waiting overhead, it incurs context switching overhead to put a thread to sleep and wake it up later on. Some implementations provide adaptive locks that spin for a short time and then put the thread to sleep if they can't acquire the resource quickly. An excellent presentation on the design and implementation of the Java Util Concurrent Package appears at this link. There are other issues to consider when choosing between the Java synchronization and scheduling classes provided by Android. Rantrant locks have lower overhead than Rantrant read-write locks, since the latter has more complicated semantics and implementation complexity. On the other hand, Rantrant read-write locks can enable more parallelism on multi-core or multi-processor hardware especially if an object's data is read much more often than it's written to. Condition objects and semaphores generally have more overhead than Rantrant locks and Rantrant read-write locks because the former do sleep locks, whereas the latter can do spin locks. On the other hand, condition objects and semaphores are much more expressive since they provide greater capability. For example, Rantrant locks and Rantrant read-write locks must be used in a fully bracketed manner where the thread that acquires a lock must be the one to release it. In contrast, Condition objects and semaphores allow threads to coordinate their processing via more flexible interaction patterns. For example, threads can use a semaphore to take turns communicating via a shared object. Moreover, condition objects allow threads to coordinate their interactions via arbitrarily complex conditions involving state that's shared by multiple threads. Condition objects have a fundamentally different purpose than Rantrant locks and Rantrant read-write locks. A thread can use these latter two locks to keep other threads out of a critical section while performing its computations. Conversely, a thread uses a condition object to keep itself out of a critical section until it can make forward progress when changes to shared state occur.
In summary, all the Java synchronization and scheduling classes outlined in this video appear throughout the Android infrastructure, framework, and application software, including many examples we cover in this MOOC. So it helps to know something about them when you examine the Android open source code base, which is available at this link. There are several reasons why concurrent programs use these classes. One reason is to protect the objects and resources shared by multiple threads from race conditions that would otherwise corrupt them if they were accessed and updated simultaneously. Another reason is to schedule and control the order in which threads execute. The importance of these mechanisms is reflected in the amount of time we devote to them in this module, which is roughly an order of magnitude longer than we devoted to Java threading mechanisms themselves. The reason for this additional focus is that complexity in concurrent programs, as in life, often stems from trying to coordinate multiple interdependent entities working together rather than the behavior of individual entities working in isolation. For each class covered in the next five videos, we'll first summarize the general concept, outline an analogous human known use of the concept to make it easier to remember what it does, and then show how the class is implemented and applied in Android. Therefore, even if you're already familiar with the Java synchronization and scheduling classes, you may learn something new about how they're implemented and used in the Android environment.